What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today Apple released iOS and iPadOS 14.6 to the public after going through about a month of beta testing. Now, in addition to iOS and iPadOS, Apple also released watchOS 7.5, macOS Big Sur 11.4, tvOS 14.6, and HomePod OS 14.6. But of course, in this video, we're talking all about iOS and iPadOS 14.6. So let's start off with the size of this update and you can see here the size came in close to 600 megabytes this was on my iphone 11 pro max so the size will vary depending on your device but it shouldn't be too large coming from 14.5.1 now if we go and check out the build number for this update if we go to our settings general about 14.6 you can see the build here is 18 f 7.2. And then if we scroll down a little bit to the modem firmware, you can see that has been updated as well. It's now 1.71.01. So if you're having any issues related to cell connectivity or just anything related to the modem, those could be solved in this update. So now what's new here in iOS 14.6? And the first thing is inside of the music application. If you go to an album, you will notice that we have a new badge now, and this says Apple Digital Master. So this is on the album page, and it will be on single pages as well. And if you tap on that, it will give you more detail about what this actually is. So it says Apple Digital Masters start from 24-bit files and are optimized to bring the best sounding audio to Apple products. So this is not something new. This is basically just a rebranding of the mastered for iTunes, you know, format. So this is just a new way that Apple is marketing that feature or that format. Now, something that is new is what Apple did just recently announce, and that is that spatial audio and lossless audio are coming to Apple Music in June at no additional cost. So they will be free included with your Apple Music subscription. And if we go to an album with some videos right here, you will see this is what it shows inside of the music application. So it shows Dolby Atmos, high res lossless and Apple Digital Master. So you see all three of those badges right there. And when you tap on Dolby Atmos, it says Dolby Atmos is an immersive audio experience that surrounds you with sounds from all sides, including above. So that is spatial audio. And you may have used this before on the AirPods Pro or AirPods Max with videos, but now it's coming to audio for all music inside of Apple Music, of course. And spatial audio is going to work for all AirPods this time, not just the Pros like it was for video. It's also going to be available for other headphones not made by Apple as well. And then, of course, we do have lossless audio. Now, unfortunately, this is not going to be compatible with the AirPods Pro or AirPods Max over Bluetooth, of course. You do still need to be plugged in to a DAC to take full advantage of that top tier CD quality. But this is what you see when you tap on the high res lossless right here. It shows, it says Apple lossless audio codec ALAC for bit to bit accuracy up to 24 bit 192 kilohertz. But spatial audio for music is going to be absolutely crazy. I love the feature when it comes to videos. I use spatial audio for videos like an Apple TV all the time. So I cannot wait to use that. And again, it does come out in June. It's going to be likely a server side update from Apple, but you will need to be on 14.6 to take advantage of that when it does get pushed out to all of the Apple Music albums and singles. We also have some changes to the music settings to reflect these upcoming changes with the spatial audio and lossless audio. So if we go into the music section right here, you can see up top, we now have where it says cellular data. So I'm gonna pull up 14.5.1 over here so you can see the difference side by side. So I'm gonna go down to music and you will see up top, we now have cellular data and it shows allow music to access. So that has been moved right there. We also, if we go down to the section right here, so we have playback and that used to be playback, it's now audio. And then if we go to cellular streaming right here, you can see we have more options. So before we went to cellular data right here, it basically just said streaming and high quality streaming and that's it. But now in 14.6, you get a little bit more detail as to what that high quality is. So you can see there the difference in high quality and high efficiency and you have the option to switch between the two for cellular streaming when it comes to Apple Music. And we also have this download over cellular toggle right here, which is not present in iOS 14.5.1. And of course, a lot of things are just kind of moved around 
and the settings as well, like the privacy and home sharing are flip-flopped around right there. iOS 14.6 also adds Apple Card family support. So Apple says that this will allow you to track purchases, manage spending, and build credit together. So this is going to be a great way to kind of track your family's spending while also allowing maybe your son or your daughter to build up credit. So to get access to this feature, all you need to do, of course, after having an Apple Card, is go into the wallet application. You will see this little prompt right here in iOS 14.6 that says Apple Card family share your apple card with members of your family sharing group view spending pay a single bill and more and then you have the option right there to share my card and when you tap on this it takes you to this page right here and you hit continue and this is where you choose the person or persons that you want to share your apple card with and of course if you do not have anybody in your family sharing group if you tap on invite people it takes you here and this is where you can invite people via messages mail or airdrop. So Apple Card Family seems like a very beneficial feature for those with multiple people in the household, especially kids. We also have some changes inside of the podcast application. So iOS 14.6, brings subscription support for channels and individual shows. So now in podcasts, you will be able to support your favorite creators, your favorite podcasts by subscribing for you know premium content or whatever the podcast show decides to add in as part of the subscription. Now, if you go to your profile up here, you will see that we have this new tab for managed subscriptions. Now, I've not been able to find any podcasts yet that take advantage of this new feature, but I will let you guys know in an upcoming video when I find that, I do expect it to be sort of a slow rollout as this is brand new. Now also when we go over to the library tab right here, you can see a few things that have changed. So you can see that shows is now up top and latest episodes is now at the bottom and also it changed from downloads to downloaded. And then if we go into a podcast right here and tap on the three dots up in the top right, you will notice that we have two new options right here. So we have remove downloads and mark all as played. Neither one of those were there in iOS 14.5.1. We also have some changes to the Find My application when it comes to the AirTag. So if you have an AirTag, you can see here inside of the Find My application, if we enable lost mode and go to continue, you can now use an email address instead of a phone number. So if you didn't want somebody who finds, you know, whatever your AirTag is attached to, if you don't want them having your phone number, you can have them contact you via email instead to tell you that your item is missing and that they found it. However, if you decide to keep the phone number in there the air tag now shows a masked phone number so it does not show your full phone number of the owner when tapped with an nfc capable device so if somebody finds your air tag and they tap it on the back of their phone it's only going to show partial of your phone number it's still going to be able to contact you but it will not show your full phone number and then also if we go to rename item and we go to custom name right here you can see it prompts us to enter in an emoji first so before on 14.5 and 14.5.1 we could do this but it was after we entered in the name now it prompts us to put in an emoji first and then you can type in the name you want for that air tag or that item. If you use the music recognition toggle inside of the control center to find a song that you didn't know the name of, it now pops up as an app clip instead of taking you to Shazam's website. So let me show you how this works now. So it found the song as you can see up top right there. Now if I tap on that, take a look at this. It opens up as an app clip instead of actually opening up inside of Safari. When I tap on open, you can see it takes me to the Shazam application, even though I do not even have that application downloaded on my phone. So just a small change, but a notable one here in 14.6. For those of you who use the voice control feature here in iOS 14.6, will now be able to unlock your iPhone for the first time after a restart using only your voice. So if we go down here, I'll just show you how this works. So if we go down to voice control right here, and turn this on. So I just came back from a reboot and you can see here it says that your passcode is required and we can actually see that we have the voice control button up in the top left now to indicate that this will work after a restart now. So now I'm just gonna enter in my passcode with my voice, tap two, tap seven. And there you go, you can see that it did unlock via my voice now after a restart. So thankfully that has been addressed here in 14.6 and that is great for users who take advantage of voice control. We also have a slight change to the verbiage in the app tracking transparency feature. So if we go to tracking right here, you will notice that we now have an additional sentence there underneath the allow apps to request to track toggle right there. And you can see it says when this is off, all new app tracking requests are automatically denied. Now this will also show you if it's grayed out 
why it is grayed out. So before it was very confusing for a lot of people on 14.5 and 14.5.1, if it was grayed out, a lot of people didn't know why. Now Apple will actually tell you if that's grayed out, what is causing it to be disabled or not you know, allowing you to toggle this on or off. We also get two new splash screens with this update. So one for podcasts, where it just basically addresses the Apple podcast subscriptions and podcast channels, which I talked about earlier, and also one for the app store that talks about app privacy details. So those are all of the changes in iOS 14.6, but we also have quite a few bug fixes in this update as well, which Apple outlines for us in the release notes. And the first one is a pretty major one, especially for a lot of people on older devices. You can see it says fixes an issue during startup where iPhone may experience reduced performance. So if you had lag when your device first came back from a reboot, I heard this from a lot of people ranging from like the iPhone 7 to the iPhone 10 even, or even the iPhone 10R and 10S. Those people had issues for whatever reason when their phone started up and it was just very laggy and very stuttery. And a lot of those people did say that this update did fix that. So if you were having issues with you know reduced performance upon startup that has been addressed here in 14.6 also going back to the app tracking transparency feature this is no longer grayed out for a good amount of people and if it is grayed out it's for a reason that's probably not related to the software we also have a fix for the unlock with apple watch feature so before if you locked your iphone on the apple watch unlock with apple watch would just not work you would not be able to unlock your phone with your apple watch on your wrist when you're wearing a mask if you you know locked your iphone from the apple watch but that has been fixed now in this update also in ios 14.5 and 14.5.1 some reminders would show up as just blank lines you would not be able to see the text right there that has been fixed in this update the call blocking extensions now show up inside of settings so in your phone settings you can now see call blocking extensions where some people could not see those on previous versions. And then a big one for AirPods users, there is a new fix in this update that says, Bluetooth devices could sometimes disconnect or send audio to a different device during an active call. So this happened to me and a lot of other people with the AirPods, and it would just basically connect to a different device, like it says, when you're on a phone call or a FaceTime call. But thankfully that's been fixed here in iOS 14.6. And then we also have some minor improvements to AirPlay when it comes to AirPlaying to a HomePod from the iPhone. So this was a very laggy experience in 14.5 and 14.5.1, but it has gotten slightly better. It's still not perfect, but it is slightly better here in 14.6. And then going back into the Find My application, we now have a fix for the developer menu that would appear on 14.5.1 if you tapped on the name of the AirTag four times rapidly. Now, as far as the performance goes on iOS 14.6, I think it's actually better than 14.5 and 14.5.1, especially for older devices facing performance issues after startup, as Apple specifically mentioned that this is a fix in this update. So for those of you who had that issue on previous versions, you will definitely want to update to 14.6 to fix that. That's a pretty big you know, change for you guys when it comes to performance. But just overall, just day-to-day -day usage does feel a little bit better, a little bit smoother overall than 14.5 and 14.5.1. And if we go ahead and check out the Geekbench scores for this update, if we go down here, you can see that we got a 1598 on the single core and a 4208 on the multi-core. So a pretty respectable score there across the board. And of course, these aren't indicative of your everyday you know, usage but it is nice to see some pretty solid Geekbench scores there from 14.6. Now, as far as battery life goes, battery life to me feels about the same as 14.5 and 14.5.1. Not a big change, if any at all, at least for me. Now, if you were having battery drain issues on previous versions, 14.6 could very well fix that, but I was not having any issues with extreme battery drain on any of my devices. Now, I will say, that I did notice that the battery life was slightly better on my iPad, on iPad OS 14.6. So if you have an iPad, you may see an improvement like I did when it comes to the battery life here. So now should you update to iOS 14.6? And I say absolutely, especially if you love music and you wanna take advantage of the new spatial audio feature when it rolls out in a few weeks now in June. We also get some other features, of course, like I showed earlier in this video. We have some bug fixes and some security patches as well that make this version just worth updating to overall. And again, the biggest thing is going to be spatial audio when it comes to Apple Music within the next couple of weeks. And I will be testing that out here on the channel as well, and give you guys more details about that when it actually fully rolls out to the music inside of Apple Music. And again, the best part is that it's free. You're gonna get it with 
your you know subscription that you already have for Apple Music. So what's next for Apple after iOS 14.6? And I think that an iOS 14.7 beta is not out of the question for starting up very, very soon. But of course, not many people are gonna care about that because in a couple of weeks now on June 7th is when we're going to see iOS 15 beta one. So that's when everything is going to be shifting over to iOS 15 on this channel. I'm going to be starting to cover a lot of iOS 15. Of course, I will cover all of iOS 14 as well, but iOS 15 is going to be here on June 7th. We should see a lot of new changes, of course, in that software. That is when the Worldwide Developers Conference 2021 starts. And of course, it goes all week until the 11th, but we will see if history is any indication that is the first beta of iOS 15 right there on Monday, June 7th. But yeah, I will keep you guys updated on Twitter and now on TikTok as well. So go follow me over there on TikTok. I did just start posting some over there very recently. So anyways, guys, there you have it. That is iOS 14.6. Everything that's new in the software. I will be bringing you guys a follow up video to tell you how the software has been running for me over the past week. And stay tuned for that. That will come on Saturday. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss my future content, including all of the iOS 15 coverage I have planned. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.